Hello and welcome to a brand new series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. This video tutorial series will guide you through everything you need to know and I'll even provide you with all the scripts and assets in each video if we do use any. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find the assets that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things, and you can also now join as a free member. The game we'll be building in this series will be loosely based on a game I made a few years ago called Timmy and Mousy. I will leave a link in the pinned comment and in the description if you want to go and play it for free. You can also go ahead and download the full game source code too. When I say full game, I genuinely mean it's a fully fledged game with all the source code you'll ever need. So the aim of this is to make a fully functional 3D endless runner game for free, just by following along with me in each video. And it is a reboot of the original series that I started a couple of years ago, but abandoned halfway through because I took a break from YouTube. So we're going to be using more updated methods and a more updated engine version. So who is this tutorial aimed at? Well, it's going to be aimed at newcomers to game development as well as intermediate developers. And I will take you from a beginner level to that intermediate level by the end of this series. Even if you're a veteran to making games, stick around just to see how we tackle things and what methods we use to achieve the desired effect. So this first tutorial, we'll explore how to get Unity on your PC. We'll look at the hub and we'll get acquainted with the engine itself, its interface, and we'll start looking at objects in the game. So. How do you get Unity? Easy, go to unity.com, click download. It's as simple as that. And what that will do is it will download something called the Unity Hub. What is the Unity Hub? It is something that looks a little similar to this. So what this is, is a collection of where you can install all your installs, whatever version you want, as well as your projects. And you can see I have a couple of projects right here, and that's dictated by this option selected over on the left. If we go down to installs, this is where you install a version of the Unity engine. So when you install the hub for the first time, you will need to go to installs and you will need to install an editor. I'm currently using version 2022.3, but you can use any version you want to. I would recommend using a more modern version rather than something like Unity 5. Most things do look the same. They stay the same throughout, but in different versions, things may have moved in different places. But like I say, all you would need to do is install the latest stable version. That is what I would recommend. So how do we create a new project? Well, that is really, really easy. Click on new project up here. And we're going to go with the 3D built-in render pipeline. There are different pipelines that you can use. But we're just going to go with this one for now because what we're going to create is not going to be too graphically intense so we don't need to worry too much about what we're doing next thing you need to do is name your project so you could name it my endless runner or in my case it was timmy and mousy and then you'd select your location now it's worth noting that i am currently offline so i do not need to select an organization but if you are online you could select an organization Naturally, to use Unity, you do need a free account, so you would just select that. You can also connect to the Unity Cloud if you wish, and you can use version control. It's up to you whether you want to select these, but for my projects, I deselect both of them. Again, it's personal preference. So once you've got your name, your folder, and if you want to set an organization, you just click on Create Project. And doing so, after a couple of minutes, you will end up with this window that we saw earlier in this video. What is this exactly? Well, this is the Unity engine itself. And if you are familiar with game development, other engines like Godot or Unreal, this will look rather familiar. It does have the same kind of feel as engines. I think there's a general kind of standard to engines these days, and they all do look fairly similar. So let's go through each section on here and understand what it is exactly. So this panel over here is called the hierarchy. And the hierarchy is where you would store all of your objects in text form, theoretically. And what do I mean by that? Well, here you can see that we currently have a main camera and a directional light. These are two objects within our scene. And you'll notice as we select each of these in the hierarchy, they are selected here in the scene panel. What is the scene panel? 
You can think of this as where you develop your game visually. So any object that you have in your game is also appearing here in the hierarchy. So each of these is called an object. Next to the game, uh, sorry, next to the scene, we have the game panel. And this is essentially where we get to play our game, whatever we built inside the engine for testing and debugging purposes. Not very exciting right now because there is quite literally nothing in our scene apart from a camera and a directional light. Over here, we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel is where you can see all detailed information about whatever object you have selected currently. So right now, you can see I have this directional light selected. And over here, you can see some information. These sections are known as components. So we have a transform component and a light component. Obviously, some objects will have different components, but not all objects have the same components. For example, if we select the main camera, there's no reason for that to have a light component, so it doesn't have it. However, it does require a transform component, as does every object in your game. What is the transform component? It basically sets the position, it sets the rotation, and it sets the scale. So it sets where it is, which way it's facing, and how big or how small it is. So every object will have this by default. There are many different components to explore. We probably won't go through all of them within this series because there's just no need for some components within this series, but we'll explain every component that we do need as we come to it. Next, we have down here the project panel. Now the project panel is a great way of storing all of your assets in your game. What are assets? An asset can be anything from a script to an audio file to a texture or even an object. And we store them much like we would do in a folder view in a hierarchy like in Windows or Mac. Next to it, we have the console panel. And the console panel is very useful for when you come to debug and try and find errors in your game. So let's say we've created a script. Script plays, but then something doesn't work properly in the script as we play the game. You'll see the error appear here. And it's usually quite helpful in telling you where the error exactly is to help you debug it. The next one I have here is animation, and you may not have this tab by default. If you don't, you can add it by going to these three little dots here, going onto Add tab, and then selecting Animation. And that just adds this tab here. You don't necessarily need to keep this animation tab here. You could remove it. So, close tab, if you wanted to. However, we will be using this tab later on because this tab gives us a real quick and cheap way of animating objects within our game nice and quickly. And it's very, very useful. So what if you don't like how all of this looks? Well, the great thing is you can move your tabs around. So if you want your game panel down here, you can just drag and drop your game panel down there. Or if this hierarchy is too large, you can shorten it. So I would recommend getting yourself accustomed to whatever way you want to have your engine appearing to you because being comfortable in your engine is important to development. I quite like how it is by default. Some people don't. It's entirely down to them. It's, you know, whatever pleases you the most. So we've introduced ourselves to all of these panels that we're going to use. What else is important at this stage? Well, something that is vital is your build settings. So if you go to File and click on Build Settings, you'll see here. We have scenes in build and we also have platform. Now, whatever is indicated by the Unity icon here is the platform you're currently building for. Well, that doesn't mean you're locked to that platform. Anything you build in Unity can be ported to any platform that you have here. Obviously, you will need licenses in some cases, like with PlayStation, but you can install the module to help you build for that platform. And as you're developing your game, you can switch platform at any point. It doesn't matter how far into development you are, but keep in mind, the earlier you change platform, it makes it a bit quicker to do so. Because if you've got a massive project, it will take a little bit of time to switch platform, but you can always switch back. So I'm going to leave mine selected as Windows, Mac, and Linux. So those are some important settings, and there are plenty of other options to explore in Unity, but We'll come to those as and when we need them. We have all the basics in place now, so let's actually get into this. Let's build something in our game to give us at least a start in this tutorial. 
So anyone that has followed me for any amount of time will know that I feel cubes are the base of any game because they can be used for anything. They can build anything. Think of Minecraft in that sense, because Minecraft is just cubes everywhere, but look what it can do and look what it can create. So let's insert a cube and let's explore what we can do with game objects. So let's go to game object at the top. Let's go to 3D object and insert a cube. And what that will do is it will set it dead center of your scene assuming that you have a brand new project. So it will also give you the opportunity to name that cube over here in the hierarchy. You can see it's called cube right now. So let's call this, um, let's call it section zero one. So the idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to create a small section of our endless runner, and this is going to be the base of it. So as this is the base, we can theoretically make this however we want it to be. And this is where the transform component comes in very handy. So position, I'm going to keep a 0, 0, 0. But there's no need to move it right now. I'm going to keep the rotation as 0, 0, 0 because we don't need it to face any other way. We want this to be kind of a ground object. So we want something to run along. So let's set the scale on the X to, let's say, 50. And you can see that it is quite large. Let's also set the Z axis to, let's set it to 20, shall we? There we go. So we've got a nice wide ground. So we can't quite see what's going on here over this side because it kind of comes out of bounds of where we can see in our scene. How do we get around this? Well, we can use a couple of different things. If you hold your middle mouse wheel, you can move the camera around. Now, this isn't the actual main camera that we use for our game. It is the imaginary camera that we use to look at our scene. So doing that, we can move around. Naturally, the wheel will scroll outwards so we can see. And we can also pivot on whatever point we're in by holding down the right mouse button and looking around. If you double click an object in the hierarchy, it will bring it into focus. So right now we have a very plain and simple ground. We could rotate it if we want to. And what I've done there is hold the mouse button, the left one, over the letter X, still got it held down, and I'm just moving the mouse around like so. And you can see that it does change this value in the X. So hold Control, press Z to undo. We can also type a physical number in there. So we could change it on the Y to 50, and it will change like so. So we'll get more in depth with some of these settings as we get further into development. Naturally, we're not going to leave this as it is. But there are so many things that you can do and create within Unity using various different game objects. And keep in mind that this was a cube originally, and now it looks more like a running plate, which is exactly what we need it for. So last thing we'll do in this tutorial is we will save our scene. What is a scene? A scene is technically an asset. It's a way of collecting various game objects together to create, i.e. a level or an entire game, depending on how you use it. So by default, the scene we have here is called sample scene. And we can find that in our scenes folder down here. So if we just hold control, press S to save it, or you could go file and save, it will save the scene, which is this right here. We'll get into scenes a little bit more throughout the series as we create more levels, more menus and whatever else. Uh, but next tutorial, what we're going to cover is materials, uh, obstacles and the general design of our level. So by the end of next tutorial, a level will start looking a little bit more like a level. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series. And I will see you next time.